Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Chisholm, and my husband Chris and I are the co-owners of Wolf Camp and School of Natural Science. Um, and we are so excited to see you today. Today we're going to be talking about um, wildlife safety and awareness and things that you need to know to help keep you safe when you and your kids and, and your friends are out in the woods here in the Pacific Northwest. So we're going to be talking about animals that you find around here, but you can find them in other places around the country as well. So it's a, this will be a good base of knowledge for you to expand on and get out there. Good. Yeah, let's just launch in and do it. Okay, so I just want to start out really fast with if you really want to get to know the animals in your area, um, in our area, the Pacific Northwest, this is a great book by David Moskowitz called Wildlife of the Pacific Northwest. And this gives you all the details that you would need to know about um, how the animals behave, where they live, what they do, what their tracks look like, and their scat looks like, and everything you need to identify them. It's a really, really wonderful book to have. and. Um, to keep in your library and in fact we even take it when we go out hiking um, to help us in the woods to um, identify things that you might see so i guess let's just get down to it um yeah what do you want to start with do you want to start with like the most dangerous thing that we would need to know or should we start with i don't know which maybe yeah why don't we start with uh the uh well since we're wolf camp why don't we start we'll with, start with the wolves with wolves because okay. they're so easy and actually statistically extremely safe nobody's ever gotten killed by a wolf uh, in modern times around down here in the united states or at least in our area Canada. so uh, anyway i just want to show you really fast what a wolf print looks like this is a close-up of a um plaster cast of a wolf track that we found over in the Tianaway area outside of Cleelum. And if you look at the size of my hand, you can see that this is a really, really big print. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about how to identify it later. But if you're running around in areas where wolves might be and you see two toes across from each other in the front, two toes in the back, and a heart-shaped heel pad that looks pretty big like that, you could be in an area where you've got wolves. So let's talk about safety around those big animals. Right. you want me to talk about it? okay well, well great because wolf's easy um you if you do see a wolf uh you really just want to respect it um you're not gonna if they're kind of growling and barking at you is because they're you probably accidentally ran right into where their den area is it's really the only time that they would be growly and barky and so you just slowly back off say sorry wolf sorry wolf respect your space and um because they are endangered in the state of washington you definitely want to stay away from those areas. Report that immediately to the wildlife, usually the Department of Natural Resources or Department of Fish and Wildlife, um, so that they know that somebody, and they probably, they all know exactly where the dens are of the wolves, usually, uh, although the, you know, there are some that are unknown, some packs in the area. And you want to report that so they can monitor those wolves to keep them safe. Absolutely, because that's our priority is living in concert with the animals that are out there. Um, regardless of what we think or feel about it, they belong here as well. So we support wolves in Washington yep. um, and all over across the country. Uh, okay, so let's move on to Let's go our to next mountain lion because most people are really afraid of them, but yes. they're the um, easiest to kind of control by your behavior. All right, everybody, are you ready for this? If you can see this hide that's on the table, this is the skin of an animal. This is actually a mountain lion. So you can see how large this animal actually is. And I'll hold up the tail. So some people see a very big cat out in the woods, but it has a little teeny stubby tail. That's actually a bobcat. But if you see this long tail, you know that you've got yourself a mountain lion. And so that'll that'll tell you basically what you need to do. So the number one thing about running into predators in the woods I said running, I probably shouldn't have. Um, meeting up with predators in the woods is you never want to run away from them because if you run, you are going to be causing their um, prey drive to come into action and they could chase after you and that doesn't end well for either one of you. So um, never run from a wild animal in the woods um, or in the prairies or wherever else you are um, or from these animals, I guess. They know that you're the dominant one and if you act dominant they will freeze and stop sometimes yeah. not until they get really close to you but okay so you're out in the walking around someplace and you happen to see a very large cat with a long tail and big sharp teeth like this looking right at you so the thing that you want to do is you want to look straight back at them you want to basically say i see you i am not intimidated by you and you do not want to run so 
You've got this critter looking at you, you're looking at it. And what you wanna do is you wanna make yourself as large as you possibly can because they hunt deer and you wanna make yourself look as little like a deer as possible. So you wanna look as large as you can. And that means if you have a child with you, I'm talking to adults now, if you have a child with you, you're gonna grab that kid, if they're little, put them behind your back and have them stick their arms out. And then you're gonna stand there with your arms up looking as big as you possibly can as well. Because if you do that, you're gonna have all of these arms and all of these legs, and you're gonna look nothing like a deer, which is what your cougar is actually gonna to wanna to have as a prey item. Um, Matter of fact, a deer, if they're staring right at a cougar, the cougar will freeze. And you need to do the same thing, stare, stare right at the mountain lion, mm -hmm. cougar, puma, catamount. Those Whatever are all the same names it. for the same big animal. Yep. Puma con color. So when you're standing there and you're looking really, really big, as big as you can, um, and staring right at that animal, then you want to start to back out of its area. And you can talk to it all you want. You oh, can yeah. just be like, big kitty, Bad I'm going to get out of your area. <laughs> I'm going to go home and eat some ice cream. And this has been great seeing you or whatever you want to say. It does not matter what comes out of your mouth. What matters is that you don't run. You face the animal. You look it straight in the eye. And you look as big as possible. Please do not grab something to throw at the mountain lion. Because if you do, well, what did you just do? You got really, really small. That's bad. You want to stay big. If you're holding on, so actually don't throw anything in a mountain yeah. lion. Just don't. Back out of the area and get out of there. I mean, if you do have bear spray, you oh. could use it if it came too yeah. close, obviously. Uh, bear spray works on all animals, obviously. As a matter of fact, it's a dangerous, uh, considered a uh, weapon in the city, so you can't really just carry it around wherever you want. It's so powerful. Um, yeah, now there are have been a couple of 25 times in the history of the North America that we know of in the entire history that somebody has been killed by a mountain lion. You can go to Wikipedia and see all those instances and about 125 or 30 attacks or so. Um, and people generally, if they fight back, um, usually always win, except that there was one instance in East King County just two years ago mm -hmm. where sadly, uh, somebody lost their life. Yes. Um, so it is, it can happen, but you have to fight anyway. There are a lot of things that are much more dangerous than this. The chances of this happening to you are almost non-existent really. And we are out in the woods all the time and have seen cougars and been in their areas and it's been fine. They usually don't want to have anything to do with people at all, which is great. And that's just exactly what we want. And just to show you really fast, remember our old wolf track? This is a mountain lion track. This is a big mountain lion track. So you can see it's just as big as the wolf track, if not bigger. And once again, you've got four toes, just like your dog oh. track. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to point to them because I've got both my hands. So you can it's see- Actually, this um, is the biggest mountain lion about, and any wolf track would be this size or bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. And mountain lion tracks would be this size or smaller, likely. So anyway, there's your big kitty, big dog. Yeah. All right, let's talk about bears. Yeah, because bears are more complicated and the one that you really need to know most because that's the one you're going to run into most. And uh, they're, they're, they're like people. You know, uh, 99 out of 100 people are totally, totally fine. And you're not going to you have know? any problems and with you those go, people. And the way you do it, when you're walking down the city and you see somebody, you kind of nod and move on, right? Yeah. And 99 out of 100 will do the same or just ignore you. And now, so that's the exact same thing as bear language. Right, exact same thing. So you wanna be polite to bears. Remember, with your mountain lion, you're gonna look it straight in the eye, you're gonna make yourself look big and you're gonna back away. But with a bear, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make eye contact. And basically what you're doing is you're saying, I see you, but you're gonna turn your face away and you keep your eyeballs still looking at the bear, but you're gonna actually make a physical movement. And if you're scared and you have to use your hand, use your hand, turn your face away. And that's telling the bear, I see you, but, I don't want a confrontation. And in all likelihood, that bear is gonna do the same exact thing. It's gonna look at you and it's gonna look away like you're the most boring person in the world and it's being a polite bear, which is what we really, really want, okay? So do not run from the bear. Do not intimidate, yell at, anything like that to the bear. Out of 99 bears. Give that bear a chance to do the right thing, which is what you want. Now, if you find that a bear is actually staring straight at you and you've done the right thing, you've looked at it, you've looked away, you want to back out of the area, but it is staring and right making some popping at you. Noises yep, it'll make some uh, agitated. Yeah, some popping noises or something like that. Uh, if you have an teeth. item in your pocket, oh yeah, it could be uh, teeth. gunning his teeth and flapping its lips. You know, and again, then you know, they're the one they're out agitated. of 100 people or one out of 100 bears that are so going to be you, a problem. You have to know how to do it. Yeah, so what you can try to do is if you've got something in your pocket and you want to just whoo, throw it off to the side, if you're lucky, the bear's going to go zook and look off at that thing and you just made it 
become a polite bear. And hopefully it'll go, oh, I forgot. I was being rude. I'm going to be polite. It's like tricking a person into yeah. thinking about something other than what they're thinking about. But if that doesn't work and that bear is still looking at you, that's when you have to change your strategy. No longer are you the polite person. You have to respond the way that the bear is responding. So, um, yeah. Uh, then you have to... You have to, I mean, a lot of times bears will come up and charge and f trying to scare you out of their it's area because the bluff there's charge. bluff charge because there's like a, uh, they're trying to protect their uh, feeding area or they've got a cubs or something. So they'll come up and, go, and you have to just stand there because you can't run. They'll just continue to run and maybe even push you over. Because remember, a bear is faster than you. The bears in this area, the American bears, sometimes called black bears, they can climb trees and definitely run faster than you. So, um, don't run from a bear. You don't need to run from a bear. If a bear is charging you, you're not going to outrun it anyway, so you have to stand your ground. So what we recommend people do, if you do not have bear spray, um, as the bear is coming at you, before it gets close enough, you don't know if it's bluff charging and it's going to turn away and just trying to scare you, or if it's going to try to knock you down um, to try to get you out of the area or whatever. You don't know. And so what you do, as the bear is running at you, before it gets close enough that it can't stop if it wants to, you're gonna to need to yell something really loud to try to scare that bear and to tell it that, no, you are in charge and it does not get to do this Kimber, to you. do you want to charge me? Um, Just start way over there, sir. And as I soon as you come into the camera, I'm gonna do what kind of you need to do. Okay. You gotta practice your Remember, vocals. I'm, I'm smacking my lips, I'm crunching my teeth. Oh, hey bear, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. No, don't worry, stay. Remember he threw something? Yep, yep, stay. Hey! You gotta get them to stop before they get to you. And if they do get to you, uh, black bears, all we don't have any, hardly any, if any at all, uh, grizzly bears in Washington State. So you just have to, again, fight. There's yes. nothing too big in Washington State that you can't just pop in the nose. And bears are all about, and dogs, dogs are much more dangerous because they're yes. all over the place and uh, kind of weird because people deal with them all the time. Um, they're very sensitive on the nose. Popping them right on the nose yep. um, is. And remember, a bear that's in this area, and you know, our American or black bears, and actually even really the grizzly bears, um, they don't want to eat you. You are not their prey species. Um, and so they're responding to you for some reason. So if a bear bluff charges you, or if a bear is in your area, if you remember about leaving the area with how you did with the mountain lion, you want to do the same thing. You want to back up out of the area and be like, hey bear, I'm just leaving you alone. Have a nice day. I love you so much getting out of here. Just get out of the area and leave it alone. Bears always win. Mountain lions always, always win. always go and uh, there's some good video videos on YouTube, good information on uh, the internet and some bad stuff. So uh, that's not good. So, um, and also don't let kids watch the uh, YouTube videos of no, actual of real actual bear attacks, attacks or something yeah. that have been caught accidentally on camera. Anyways, but um, Kim's going to show bear spray and then she's going to spray me with a well, fake no, one. I, I don't have it open yet, but oh. anyway, so I just want to tell you if you're traveling in areas where bears are frequent, um, normally like a national park, um, they're going to have to tell you Oh, they're going to signage that tells you exactly what to do with the bears in that region and follow that no matter what you've heard anywhere else do what the specific location tells you to do because they know their animals all right so this is a bear spray that we carry it's counter assault do a little bit of research and pick out a really good bear spray and carry it with you if you're carrying it you must put it on a spot where you can reach it fast because if a bear is going to charge you it's not going to say oh i'm going to give you a minute until you can whip out your bear spray oh no it's going to act and it's going to happen fast you come around a corner of a berry patch there's your bear it looks at you you look away you try throwing something it's smacking its lips and bam so have this in a spot where you can grab it and know how to use it if you don't know you can buy practice bear Definitely testers pipe in this, fun this with is the fun. kids too yeah. it's a little stinky but eh, it's really these fun. are like 10 bucks each or something yeah and, and definitely they, worth it. it's called an inert and if you get an inert training, training and spray. And all of it's gone in like five seconds. Yeah. This is how fast it happens. Same thing with the so real So you have ones. to know how to shoot this at bears. You have to be able to think about where the wind's coming from, all sorts of good things, and exactly how to get it into its nose and not just blast yourself back with it. That's um, pretty much our 15 minutes. We I know, have to that's stop, much unfortunately, the recording and everything. So yeah. um, we are pretty much full at Wolf Camp this summer, 2021. Happy. We have and a happily. shortened, yeah, happily. But we have a shortened schedule. As a matter of fact, um, but next year, 2022, we're going to get back to normal. Um, we do have some family workshops, um, but check it out and uh, contact us at uh, chris at wolfcamp.com or kim at wolfcollege.com. Yeah. And we'll look forward to seeing you out in the field. Yeah. Lake Sammamish or down here in Puyallup uh, at our house uh, at Blue Sky Farm. All right. Take it easy. Bye.